Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of One Another Marriage, where we seek to strengthen relationships for greater fulfillment and impact on the world around you. We are Dr. David and Teresa Mabry. Hi, Teresa. Hi, David. How are you today? Doing well. Good. How are you? <laughs> doing well. I doing know. well. You I'm are doing, doing well. I am. I'm doing well. You have a bagel sitting in front of you. I do. And we just discussed right before we started <laughs> that that bagel will not be touched for the next 45 minutes. It won't be because I don't want to be chewing in people's ears as they're and, listening. And the, and the people thank you. And the people thank me. That's right. They do. I mean, I ate half of it. So the other half will wait um, mm-hmm. once we're done here. Mm-hmm. Then... I can consume the other half. Yep. So, yeah. You, you're, that's where you so and I are you're so... You're welcome. Uh, th- thank you. Yes. <laughs> you, you and I are so different in that. Mm-hmm. Like, I in would... In consuming bagels? And, well, oh. the speed at which we oh, eat... Oh, the speed at which is we eat. One, ...is one. Mm-hmm. But some of this it reveals some other differences. And that is speed in which we eat. I would have inhaled that thing pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Second thing is, is that I would have found a way to eat that bagel while on the air and it could on, and it could have sounded disgusting and <laughs> it's still i still would have been like oh i'm still i no problem eh but no it would have been a problem what'd you do just go to canada all of a sudden <laughs> <laughs> what was that apologies to our canadian <laughs> listeners a eh? hey all of a sudden you just threw in the canadian a <laughs> i did i don't know where that came from like that was out of the blue. We haven't had one of those in a while. I mean, we haven't. You mock. It was well. No, I mean that was a that's a real thing. That's a eh? I might. Yeah, my family, of course, as you know, the yeah. listeners don't know, but we consistently went to Canada every single summer for our vacation. It's we, a wonder they didn't we give you a citizenship. Fishing. Yeah, so fishing. That's right, fishing trips. We, we took fishing trips and we went up there, and mm-hmm. so. So that that was part of our uh, vernacular was to use a. Eh? <laughs> eh? That the funny thing, you the know. tension between your heritage from <laughs> Kentucky and <laughs> your the Canadian visits. The Southern drawl meets the Canadian a. That's so funny. I know. Sometimes well, it came out well. Sometimes it didn't. That's Just right. Just depended upon if we were feeling more Southern in our talk or. Northern. The point being, though, is that bagel is not going to be touched <laughs> for the next 45 minutes. Now it's going for 40 minutes or almost 40 minutes. It'll be okay. But It'll today okay. we're, we're um, hey, we're celebrating today. It's, the beauty is it's June 1st. I feel like welcome June 1st. Welcome to June. Yeah, welcome to June, everybody. Mm-hmm. And uh, hope everyone had a good time uh, visiting with family and connecting and remembering those that we've mm-hmm. lost uh, for Memorial Day. Right. So, but... Um, June 1st, it always, even though summer doesn't officially start till yeah, the 20th, like 21st, 20th or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it depends on the day, um, on where it falls there mm-hmm. exactly. But but it feels like June 1st feels like a official start to summer, right? Yeah, so forth and so on. Yeah. So yeah. what are we talking? So we're about just today? gonna we're just gonna say it is. It is. Yeah. It is uh, June 1st, and we're heading into our summer season. Woo-hoo. Hip hip hooray! Woo-hoo. All right. Well, hey, today we are continuing on in our Love Step series that mm-hmm. we're doing, and we are on the letter E. We've been doing love one another, serve one another, touch one another. Today is E for edify, mm-hmm. or another way to say it is encourage. So mm-hmm. edify one another, and and then the P is for peace, um, have peace with one another. And so once again, we are unpacking our Love Step material for you, and this is the material that we developed and wrote uh, based upon the one another's out of, out of the Bible. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, we're excited today to to share with each other, to talk, to, um, I don't know, uh, just encourage Mm -hmm. our listeners with what we're talking about with Mm -hmm. Edify. Hey, let's make this uh, real quick. Exactly. That's where we're headed today. Let's Mm -hmm. make this quick announcement, though, is that this Thursday will be our final Facebook Live. Mm Mm-hmm. For, for the season. For the season. So <laughs> for season one, which season one went long time. Season one went long. We're we started it last COVID year in season. April. Um, yeah. April and to here we are. It would it will be June 3rd that mm-hmm. that particular Facebook Live will drop. And we pretty much were consistent. I think we only took off. We mm-hmm. took off uh, 
two weeks, I think, there in December, and we took off yep. one week in September. But pretty much we've had a weekly Facebook Live, and we feel like we're just going to kind of like take a small break here for yeah, maybe the, the summer, summer season. Summertime. And, um, so season one will be in the books. Yeah. So, but Facebook but that's, Live that's is, Facebook Live. Which is what? It's for those folks that haven't discovered us yet. Sure. Um, that is on our uh, Facebook um, page, One Another Marriage. You can look up One Another Marriage and um, like and follow um, us as well. And it all of our last year's worth of Facebook Lives are on there. Mm -hmm. And we cover a variety of topics. Um, we've covered our Love Step material as well. Um, but Anyway, we just had a really great time, and we we had a really fun time here in May because we were kind of wrapping up talking about some marriage and parenting on mm -hmm. Facebook Live, and we actually included our children. Yeah. Um, so our daughter, Taylor, and I did a Facebook Live, as well mm -hmm. as just this past week, um, both of our sons, Alex and Gabe, joined you, um, David, and, uh, and so it was, it was fun to kind of have the interaction with our children, mm -hmm. um, for those two Facebook live, uh, events in, in general, but, um, yeah. And they, those two episodes ended up being for our season one, yes. year one of Facebook live ended up being two of the most watched and responded to yes. episodes mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I just checked the stats the on. That's mm -hmm. right. I just checked the stats on um, the one from last week with the boys, yeah. and saw lots of yeah, lots of listens um, and different things. Lots so yeah, watches. if you are um, listens and watches, yeah, not listens. Yes. Listens <laughs> is happening right now. Some That's may not be even just a word. Listening. Oh my goodness, listen. But I don't yes. know why you would do a but uh, have it be um, t tune in. Is that how you say it? tune in to a Facebook Live mm -hmm. without um, watching? Right. Although you can just listen to it. Sure, you could just listen, but, but. the idea is it's a watch, so therefore you're gonna it's a live, mm -hmm. so you're gonna watch it. Um, but anyway, um, we will be continuing the podcast. Um, no mm -hmm. break on the podcast for the summer season. Just taking a taking a slight break from the Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. um, but so go and ahead. that's so that's found uh, this Thursday mm -hmm. at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. It's a half hour Facebook Eastern Live Standard for us. Time. Eastern Standard Time. Mm -hmm. It's a half hour. Yep. Right. And and rarely more than that. Mm -hmm. um, you get to see us. See you our get lovely, to see our lovely faces lovely if you've faces. never seen our lovely faces <laughs> bef uh, previous to this. Right. Uh, and so you can catch and you catch them all on the rewatch of different topics that mm -hmm. you can fish through a little bit and see right. uh, what's going on there. So right. we'd love to invite you to be part of that. But hey, it's time for puzzles. Right. And you have the puzzle today. I have the puzzle of the week, puzzle of the week. And once again, we encourage all uh, the couples out there and in your relationships to share puzzles with one another because it builds intimacy, mm -hmm. um, connect, connectivity yep, with one connection. another because you're sharing um, more than just business items. Right. So my puzzle of the week. So here's, here's I don't know if it's a puzzle. So yeah, we'll call it a puzzle. But for me, it's... Maybe a puzzle that you know I've I've been, I've gone to a lot of school over the years yeah. and <laughs> yes you have. and there are certain things yeah there are certain things Teresa that I'm ready are you ready I'm there are ready. certain things that I still don't grasp quickly okay and and the funny thing is they're common things and I don't know if anyone else out there can relate to this. But it's a puzzle to me, like how it doesn't come more quickly. Okay. So, yesterday was Memorial Day, not Labor Day. Right. But sometimes I have to pause for a second and go, wait a second. Does Labor Day come in the fall or the spring? And does Memorial Day come in the spring or the fall? I have to, oh, I have to pause. Oh, I have geez. to pause. But it's the same thing that causes me to pause, and I think I may have this down by now, but sometimes I have to stop and say right and left, like I have to look and go. Oh, my Lord. I have to stop and say, which, which, which is if it goes too quick. So at the right and left, I know, I feel, I feel like I should have some of these things down a little bit more of like. So really, the puzzle is about you. It is. It's, <laughs> well, it's a puzzle why these things don't come 
more easily. Because right is still right and left is still left. Yes, I don't. I don't have a puzzle on the definition. Right. Of and the Memorial Day still happens in May. It does. And Labor Day still happens in September. But I am. I am. I guarantee you that there are some listeners out there mm-hmm. that are like me that they have to pause and think for a second. Wait a second. This is. This is like, or you may have something similar where it's like, this is a common thing. Yeah. Like, I think another one is like, if someone says it's the, it's the fifth month of the year. I, I sometimes have to go, <laughs> I have to go like January, February, March, April, April May, May, uh, May. <laughs> May. I mean, I have to do that one all the time. <laughs> it's funny. And it's a funny thing. Is yeah. Like I said. I've I've yeah. shoved a lot in this brain yeah. over the years, but not those things. You, you've been around for a while. Just because someone has had a lot of schooling doesn't mean they know they they got it all figured out. Mm. So so for me, the puzzle okay. is the common things that should be easy. I could tell right now you're holding back so <laughs> I much. Am. And I, I want to thank the listeners for being Teresa's filter right now. Because <laughs> You're trying to practice a healthy listening techniques when it comes I to puzzles. Am. You're not allowed because to Because I'm not supposed to solve it. I'm and, not supposed to mock it. I'm not supposed to fix it. I'm not supposed to do these types of things. <laughs> Can and you hear the eye roll in yeah. her tone right now? And I'm folks. just sitting here like, really? Really? See, you're this doing it. Puzzling? Don't do it. I know. <laughs> Resist keep puzzling? resisting. That's why I said the puzzle is really with you. It's not with these items because Which is the fifth the fifth month is always May. If I quizzed you right now, could you do, like, if I said, how quickly can you tell me if I give you? No. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Let's. Okay. Don't don't think about it. Don't think about it. Are, you're going to give me a number from I'm one gonna, to 12? I'm going to give you a number. Are there 12 months? Oh, okay. Gosh. Yes. I'm going to give it to you, and okay. you're going to tell me. Okay. Ready? Yes. Nine. September. Wow, you're good. Did you know it? Do you need to count? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, to make sure the number is correct. See, you are just trusting <laughs> that I know what I'm talking about. You are you are a school teacher, though. I'm a teacher, too, but at a yeah, different, I was gonna say, different dude, level. Yeah, I going to say, dude, seriously? Like, yeah, but it's different. It's like, it's, it's like, why in the world <laughs> is Jeff Foxworthy doing Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? <laughs> and when people forget, like, what you should know when you're oh, a fifth grader, funny. which is what, what month of the year. All right. So, okay. yeah. so Memorial Day is what we just celebrated. Not Labor Day. Not Labor Day. Mm-hmm. Memorial Day. What helps me to remember Memorial Day is M and M. M- Memorial Day happens <gasps> in May. Why haven't I heard that before? I think possibly along the way it's been said, but it just wasn't something that you grabbed a hold of maybe. Yeah, but September starts with S and Labor Day starts with L. It doesn't matter though if you if you're just struggling between the two, as long as you have one nailed down, then you know what the other one where okay. it, when it happens. Fair right? enough, there's my puzzle. You try you solved it. There you go. <laughs> no, I didn't solve it. I'm just telling you for me what's always helped is just that helps me. Okay. to remember memorial. This is even though we're over even labor. Though this podcast is going out on countless platforms sure you there are not always ways of commenting but if you are on a platform where you can comment <laughs> can you please show me some love ladies and gentlemen and let me know who else out there has a common thing right. like when memorial day and labor day are right or your left and your right or what month I and know. number correspond it would be interesting to know if that type of thinking goes along with a personality trait or a personality um Part of your personality, or whatever. But you know what? I think another thing that correlates with this is uh, directions. And oh. I know some, not everyone's mm-hmm. good with directions. Sure. Like, like if you if you were to say which way is right. is east, I could point it out pr- pretty quickly, no matter where we're at. I can get turned around to some places I'm not right. as familiar, but it it usually like I, I can process elimination kind of thing. Sure. But I think a lot of people are challenged with directions. Oh, absolutely. Like I've said, I've, I've, um, I remember a conversation. I was working with this one organization doing some consulting, and I, I said, "Well, that you just um, put, you do that program in the in the South Building," and they were like, "South Building? Where's the South Building?" <laughs> well, I, and I just assumed that the folks there, who it's their building, their buildings, their right. complex, they would know exactly where that's at. But it wasn't the case, and so right. um, 
but still, that's I think it's uh, there are some common things that are mm-hmm. struggles. Put in the comments wherever your platform if you don't have that because most of you are listening. Most of you are listening on your phones right now and through iTunes, which we Correct. appreciate it. And yes. if you're on iTunes, right by the way, make sure you uh, rate, rate, review. Uh, yeah, give us share. a review. Yeah, um, it makes it. a difference. Mm-hmm. It does make in, a difference. In helping, so helping we appreciate uh, those. connect with as many couples as possible. Right. We appreciate those who have who have given a review. And so thank you very much for that. Well, there's so, my puzzle, yeah, there you Teresa go. Mabry. All and right. thank you for listening. Well done. Well mm-hmm. done, David yeah. Mabry. So today we're, right. we're going to so, talk about edify. Yeah, we're going to get another. into edify one another. Um, and as always, we will have some verses um, that go along with uh, the teaching. So we'll be unpacking some of those, and David will be unpacking at the beginning here about how to edify. And if this is your first podcast with us, because it's mm-hmm. it's cer- certainly, we welcome you and are glad you're listening. But if you need to catch up, go listen to the other podcasts. And the right. whole idea is that uh, One Another Marriage is based upon the, about, about 50 times in the New Testament, it talks about uh, the one, it has the one and others, which is... Um, a mutually beneficial reciprocal relationship shares the same same word that's mm-hmm. shared by all of them. And so we've divided those up into five major categories, which Teresa has already mentioned them, love one another, serve one another, touch one another, encourage or edify one another, and have peace with one another. Correct. So go listen to the others from the last uh, few weeks right. and catch up. And today we're at the second to last one, mm-hmm. edify one another. Edify. And this one really is about pulling out the best in your partner, which mm-hmm. will We'll g- cover that at the end. And, and the reason why we will use the word encourage, but we don't like to use it a tremendous amount because it's not just about affirmation or saying nice things or giving compliments. Right. It's not always just, not just about always that. that. It, right. it's, it's much fuller, if you will, fuller of an experience with, um, with your partner and ch- trying to build build them up. Right. And so, yeah. So we're going to base it off of um, Ephesians 4, 2, the verse out of Ephesians 4, 2, which is always be humble and gentle, be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. So having that like Christ-like social awareness um, or couple awareness, as we like to say, um, you need to be in tune with each other to understand your partner, um, to really just um, appreciate who they are, their perspective on things. It may not be your perspective, kind of like your puzzle that you just shared. Um, I typically have n- not struggled with those types mm-hmm. of things, um, but it's okay that you have and and to understand um, that that is a puzzle for you. Um, but to, yeah, to just have that like couple awareness to be able to, to truly, um, think through, this is the person that, um, God has placed you with and that this is the person, um, that, that helps to like complete the whole of your relationship and that, um, each one of you bring certain aspects and traits, um, into the relationship and how we, edify one another is so important because whether or not we've talked about love languages before and whether or not your love language is words of affirmation um, for those people who words of affirmation is their love language you know they may do a little bit better job at this particular item because you're using those words Mm -hmm. to um, edify each other but um, but you wanted to say something I think to the effects too of just um, how like as as if you're in a relationship where both of you are both Christians, how you can use your edification to actually spur one another on mm-hmm. in a in a spiritual direction. Yeah, and ultimately this is and this can translate to everybody out there. We once again we would always encourage and we believe that relationships. There's a tremendous amount of wisdom in the Bible for your relationship, and so this applies to everybody. But uh, in the sense of pulling out the best in your partner, helping them be all they can be and growing actually in their faith journey. I love this, those verses, for instance, out of Ephesians 4, 2 that Teresa read is that, you know, always be humble and gentle, be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults 
because of your love. Not It doesn't say anything there about maybe words spoken, but it talks about a heart, a, a mm-hmm. place um, that you position yourself, right. that you humble and gentle, patience, and choosing the path of patience, and then giving space for one another's faults, giving people permit, giving your partner permission to be imperfect mm-hmm. because of your love. I, that is tremendous mm-hmm. right there. Yep. It's, it's me looking at you, you looking at me and saying, you know what? I'm going to give you space to be an imperfect person. And that's where it starts in this edification or this building up mm-hmm. process with one another. And that's, that's specifically going to help someone on their journey your partner on their journey going forward as much as possible. And so I, I just, I just love this one because Mm -hmm. it's, it's really, instead of becoming, um, you, you have a choice. You could be a competitor with your, (laughs) with your spouse, your partner, you can, you can try to, um, you can always feel threatened or think the worst. Mm-hmm. You can you can do right. the opposite of you what we're encouraged opposite. to in here, and that is sure. always be prideful and harsh, <laughs> uh, be impatient with each other, and give no space uh, for the imperfections or faults of your partner. And um, because of your selfishness, because of your selfishness, <laughs> right? That's a horrible way That's of saying it, right? But, right. <laughs> but that is of uh, no, and nobody sets out to do that. But a lot of couples, a lot of individuals, yeah. do that in a relationship. Unfortunately, not not the majority, maybe, but I think everyone has great intentions. But there is this self preservation that goes on, and self preservation right. in a relationship mm. goes to selfishness, right? Kills the relationship. It does kill mm-hmm. the relationship. So this that was idea, a great way to unpack it, though. Yeah. To take the take the verse and to look at the opposites, like yeah. of what yeah. what would this look like if we if we weren't like this if mm-hmm. we didn't do this. Mm-hmm. So so good job. We, we would call this. Thank you. They would we would call this, um, and you've already alluded to it, and I appreciate that. Is a uh, we would call it a Christ like social awareness, and and as Christ followers, our whole goal and agenda is to be more like Jesus, to say more what Jesus would say. Yeah, right. right. And so in that, we would we would translate that into a couple awareness. So you're aware more mm-hmm. of your relationship and you're attentive to it and you're 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 going to be so attentive that you're like, you know what, how am I doing on this? Am I, I, I need to be humble and gentle, patient with each other and make allowance for each other's faults because I have this great love for my partner. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Reminds me of that Tim McGraw song. What's that one? Always be humble and kind. Oh, uh, oh yeah. 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 Sing it. No, I don't know enough of the words of it. I'm just, I'm going back in my brain because you were talking about being humble and I'm like, oh yeah, like we humble and kind, to, like Tim McGraw's song yeah, that he sings. We need to start maybe, okay, so there's a, like, could be like a segment for the podcast <laughs> where Teresa sings or <laughs> Teresa's song reference or song of the day, you know, there's it's every true. episode we have There's just something. something that sparks it. Hey, it just goes to show that music really does just infiltrate in all really? areas. Last week, you almost broke out in the John Cougar Mellon camp. I did, almost. Little ditty about yeah. Jack and Diane. Right. Well, I, yep. This week, it's Tim McGraw. This week, yeah. No, it was just, yeah, it was just reminding me of that song, Always Be Humble and Kind. That's a good one. Yeah. Wasn't that made for the movie The Help? No, it wasn't for a movie. Well, I think he was just doing it. I don't remember um, if it was attached with a movie, but um, it was talking about, uh, it, it was written by that one lady, I forget her name, and she wrote a lot of oh the yeah, songs that um, that Faith Hill would sing. And mm-hmm. um, and so they had her write this one. Um, and she's a mom, and she was just mm. talking about her kids and what, what was something that she always wanted to be able to teach to her kids. And so it was actually sung by him in reference mm-hmm. to, um, yeah. you know, uh, what a parent should be teaching their child to be, which is humble and kind. But at the same time, you know, mm-hmm. um, the adult needs the lesson as well. So that's yeah. awesome. That's good. I like that. Right. Now, um, take us into, Teresa, talk to us about the the, the best use of words. Now, we said mm-hmm. that edifying one another does not necessarily mean using words but right. it's hard to imagine this one being fulfilled this one another being enacted without words is part of it 
Right. There has to be some, right. There's going to have to be some talking Mm -hmm. involved. Um, Mm -hmm. But I mean, like, obviously the, uh, the Ephesians 4, 2 verse, um, be patient with each other. You don't have to have words to be patient. Mm -hmm. Patience can just come by just mentally telling yourself, but this all sets up. I'm going to, I'm going to take, I'm going to be patient with Mm -hmm. this part right here because, you know, I, I know, I know the heart of my partner and I know this is not what they're exactly meaning right now. So, Mm -hmm. and, and that patience may not always have words attached with it. It could be just an action, but, but it's hard to imagine the use of words being positive without, with a, this Ephesians 4, 2 kind of, Living. Living, right. right. Yeah. So when you're talking about edifying and you're talking about um, using those words, we want to use our words in three different ways. These are the ways that we teach, at okay, least. Okay, three ways. There are going to be probably many more that our listeners could think of. But um, in our curriculum or our material, our material, we talk about using your words to build one another up. Yes, to build one another up. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, it's in each one of these, we could think of the opposite as well. Sure. The opposite is to tear one another tear down. One another. And right. that's a defense mechanism oftentimes within a couple relationship because you really think you want to build up your partner. And mm-hmm. what's the verse with that one? So the verse is out of First Thessalonians 5.11. It says, therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. So we want to use our words to build up, right? Um, the second way... And we'll we'll go back. Maybe we'll go through all three of them, and then we'll kind of go back and oh uh, yeah, that'd be and, good. Um, that'd be good. Give some examples. So the second way that we want to use our words is to fight sin. Yeah, and so for folks that if you aren't we use that terminology, is it it's it's to fight um, a missing the mark or to fight falling short mm. to fight kind of missteps right in a, and it, and because missteps can hurt you as an individual and hurt the relationship and mm-hmm. so if the word sin is not part of your language and this is not to insult anyone's intelligence out there but it's more of it's um just to help kind of expand that understanding to fight missteps missing mm-hmm. the mark um uh, falling short or mm-hmm. sin right so the verse comes out of hebrews three thirteen says but encourage one another daily as long as it is called today so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Yeah, yeah, very good. So, and that's Hebrews three, uh, thirteen, where uh, we we want to encourage one another every day, as long as you have an opportunity to do so. Right. And when you do that, it will keep your partner's heart soft. Yes. And open. And not become rigid because rigidity in the heart can lead to uh, sinful, falling short, right. missteps, uh, missing the mark, behavior. Right. Right. And then finally, the third way that we can use our words is to glorify and honor God. To glorify and honor God. And the verse comes out of Ephesians 5, verses 18 through 20. It says, Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, yeah. Ephesians 5, 18 through 20. That's good stuff. And using, making sure that the words are used um and, and it may sound there like that's ki- highfalutin kind of spiritual, um, <laughs> religious kind of right. language. Right. But really, that's just every day making sure that words are honoring. Exactly. R- rather than, because there's a lot of ways, uh, directions that our words can go. Right. Absolutely. So, um, so w- a long time ago, we watched a movie, and out of that movie, it um, it talked about this uh, this little boy, and he would um, his name was Parker, and it was um, one of the taglines in there was <laughs> "Use your words, Parker. Use your words." Right, and so um, that just has become kind of like a a running joke in our family ever since mm-hmm. we watched that movie, mm-hmm. um, because it 
it was um he was in that that like later preschool age so he was around like four to five he hadn't officially gotten into kindergarten yet and so um at his little school they would talk about you know blue words which were cold and cool and calm and then uh, red words which were the hot more like tempered ones or whatever um so whenever we talk about this using our words we always joke about use your words Parker. use your words Parker. use your words Parker. Right. make sure that you're using your words in such a way that you are trying to build each other up to fight sin and to glorify and to honor god what's that movie what is that movie again I'm i know trying i'm trying to, to think is it parent um, not parenthood no it's not parenthood and i don't know every single time we talk about this Hold on, I'll look it up. But yeah. every single time we're talking about this, I, the name always escapes me, and I feel so bad because it is one of the movies that our family, we would just watch this movie um, all the time, and it's got a great cast in it. Um, it's got uh, it's got Billy Crystal, and it's got um, it's a Bette, uh, Midler. Bette Midler, and it's got Marisa Tomei, and um, and then I forget the other person that it had in there too. Um, hold well, on, I'm going to find it. Yeah, you find it. You look it up and mm-hmm. I'll... Parental guidance. Parental guidance. Good I Lord. know it was a Parental parent. guidance. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, great movie, totally fun, um, and and but the fact that we use our words, and even though neither of us are named Parker, it is just that joke that we have with each other of, use your words, Parker, of what you want to do. Um, I feel like... At the beginning, when you were talking about the Ephesians verse and you gave the opposites of it, mm-hmm. um, that was a good, that was a good reminder. And I, I did say, you know, like I really appreciated that. Like that was a, that was a great way to unpack that and kind of look at it with a new perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, that would be just a simple way of me just right then. Sharing Mm -hmm. words towards you to build you up, to Mm -hmm. encourage you, to let Mm -hmm. you know, hey, like that's that's going to sit with me for a while, and I appreciated that perspective. The the consistent word through all of this is to encourage one another, but encouragement happens Mm -hmm. in different ways throughout the relationship, throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the like different times. So when we build one another up, Mm -hmm. there therefore encourage one another, Mm -hmm. build one another encourage one another in order to fight sin on a regular basis. So what I love about um, that one is that you, you are helping your, your partner be the best version of themselves. Right. Now you are not totally responsible for that. Right. That that's unfair. It's Mm -hmm. unfair to put upon your partner to be able to, uh, to expect them to, make you the best make version you the of best yourself right, exactly. but they play a key role mm-hmm. like um hun you you help me be the best version of myself although i'm ultimately i ultimately need, need to make wise decisions and right. and um and and do the right things daily in order to be the best version of myself but there are certain things that you do now research would bear that for men particularly and this is not the discount for women because i do believe that for women this does make a difference but but research would show that men um in married relationships make wiser decisions they they live longer s- simply because of <laughs> things like they eat healthier <laughs> they drink less right. they take less risk yeah they less risky behavior mm-hmm. um and so you there are multiple things and it's a it's a really across and it's overwhelming it's across the board the research would show that uh, to be in a married relationship for a man particularly will make a difference. And it does mm-hmm. make a difference for women as well. But the research would bear for men particularly. This That applies to this th- this uh, biblical understanding as well, is that we are edified by our partners when we, each day our actions, help our partners be the best version of themselves. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I think there's a good point to pause and to do a heart check and ask yourself the question, how are you helping your partner be the best version of themselves? Not as a not as an assumption that you are totally responsible for, as mm-hmm. we said, I mm-hmm. just want to make sure that's clear, that that the weight of your partner's um the 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 sum total of their wise decisions are not based upon you because they're <laughs> independent moral agents. Right. But 
for, for you, how, how are you doing? How, how can you do the best? What is something you do each day or can you do each day that helps your partner be the best version of themselves? And mm-hmm. so I know that for, for me, honey, you, um, each day, you're pretty deliberate. And I know we didn't want to go here totally with this, but you're, you're pretty deliberate at knowing that, that I really love p- positive feedback and affirmation mm-hmm. on it. That helps affirm that, Hey, I'm headed in the right direction. Or right. That, and because you're also pretty open about as something that you're displeased at. And I, I don't mean to say that like you're complaining or that you're a thorn in my flesh. That's not the case, <laughs> but it's, it's more of, um, you'll give me, you'll give me immediate feedback and helpful feedback for direction. And I do really pay attention to that, even though sometimes mm-hmm. I don't, <laughs> I don't seem like I'm paying attention to that. It does make a difference. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. It's good to know because that's helpful because if, if I don't think that you're really listening or whatever, mm-hmm. then I need to go back to that. Ephesians, be patient with each other, <laughs> making allowance for each for other's their, faults, their faults because of your love. And you so, have to give me lots yeah. of, um, of leniency on that one. But I, but to the point, um, so you, and a simple thing would be healthy eating. Mm. Um, uh, although you allowed me to get a cookie today (laughs) and I do appreciate that because you said, am I telling on you if I said, no, I was going to say, I didn't just allow you to get a cookie. I allowed myself to also get a cookie. You said, (laughs) you said very directly, which I appreciate. This is a good, good thing for our friends out there. And that is, uh, saying what you want uh, and being uh, right. assertive, healthy assertiveness. Right. You had healthy assertiveness when you said, um, I would like a chocolate chip cookie. Right. You were very specific I was. in your request. And I said um, what I normally say during those occasions, and that is, because I'm not very good at holding anyone accountable in our <laughs> relationship uh, for healthy eating. <laughs> but I said, um, okay, where do you want to go to get it? And yes, and, and just to be clear, we were driving at the time, so it's not like we just run and get in the car every time, like, Teresa says something silly like this. But yeah. yes, so, right, well, that's good to know. Like, I so, help hold you accountable to healthy eating and just using using my words to encourage mm-hmm. you of, like we always taught our kids, is sometimes you're going to make choices. One of them is mm-hmm. the apple, one of them is the cookie. Now, it wasn't always in reference to food, but it was just in reference to G- mm-hmm. general choices in mm-hmm. life one of them will be a better choice like the mm-hmm. apple one of them may not be as good of a choice like the cookie so that's good to know well um, another, another example i'd like to give is that when it comes to um to, to, like making wise decisions and not mm-hmm. being i like especially this phrase hardened by sin's deceitfulness right and so there have been times that i have felt um kind of like there's been an injustice or I just feel like complaining or I feel like um, I'm, I'm whining about something. You'll have a listening ear for that. Mm -hmm. And then you, uh, you'll patiently kind of ask questions that help correct my direction. And it's not a demeaning way or a um, condescending way Mm -hmm. or that I feel like you're, you're trying to be my mother kind of thing. Right. Um, But it's more of like, um, help kind of process. And I think I do that for you as well. Yeah, you is do. Is that I'll hear you out and then instead of saying, well, you're wrong here and here and here, it's right. more of, um, hey, here's a here's another perspective or can I share this perspective or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what I think about edifying or bringing out the best. Absolutely. Because sin can creep in. Yeah, that's Missing right. the mark, falling short. Mm-hmm. of this. Like if you weren't there, then I could really go into a dark, a black hole with it or a dark space. And I think you is the same way. And I think many of us would go to a, a probably not a healthy space if we didn't have our partners to pull out the best in us. And that's where I really think about that sense deceitfulness. And so really encourage folks out there. What's one thing that you can do today? What can you do each day to help pull out the best in your partner uh, Mm -hmm. going forward. And we actually have a pull out your best verse, don't we? I was going to say, and that leads into, this isn't necessarily 
uh, the three the three ways that we were talking about, but ultimately those three ways, using our words to build up, to fight sin, to glorify and honor God, pull out the best in your partner, which leads us to Hebrews ten twenty four. <clears throat> Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Mm. So thinking about ways to help motivate one another, motivate your partner um, in in the areas of love and good works, and um, and one of the one of the things that that I feel like I've written down here as a reminder to myself is sometimes um, I need to do a better job at engaging you at your best moments. And so sometimes some of those best moments are like when we're taking a walk together. Mm -hmm. So if we're taking a walk together, that's something that you enjoy to do. And and sometimes we do it together and sometimes we don't. But if I'm like, hey, let's go take a walk together, that's engaging you at at one of your better moments because Mm -hmm. you enjoy that time together. And it allows for a little bit more of that edifying maybe to creep in Mm -hmm. because we're we're in a good spirit you mm-hmm. know or we're in a good good headspace another another opportunity to engage you at at your best moment is like um when i come home from work sometimes you're out doing work on the front porch and mm-hmm. you're sitting on the front porch because you enjoy having that time or mm-hmm. you're on the back porch where the bird feeders are and you're watching the birds mm-hmm. and things like that so if i take the opportunity to actually come out and to sit down and to engage you at those times um that's that's a way to to edify um, mm-hmm. and encourage mm-hmm. you as well. So thinking through in relationships, if if we all just tried to find those better times, mm-hmm. you know, where our partner is in that great, you know, headspace and enjoying something, and then that's mm-hmm. the that's the quality time and engaging of being able to you know have that couple awareness. Um, to using our words in the best way, to pulling out the best in our partner, to motivating one another on to acts of love and good works, like the Hebrews mm-hmm. verse says. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so. and, it, and the key there is it. let's think about what motivates us right. individually. Mm-hmm. Uh, condemnation, guilt, those are not things that those are very, are not, those absolutely. are not motivating at all. And so here's what, uh, here's what we would suggest, right? We would say um, use... Use your encouraging words and your assertiveness and mm-hmm. active listening because, once again, have a tool and permission to use it. Right. You have a tool, which is I wish I want exercises. We've taught that before, which is share with sh- – be assertive with your partner to say, you know what motivates me from you? Th- this this would be. I, I want more of this or I want less of this because – that's demotivating to me. Mm-hmm. And so, and then give permission to your partner to share what motivates them and then repeat that back to them on what, uh, what their motivation is. And then pay attention to that. Like, like Teresa, if you shared with me a new kind of way that you're motivated, if you said, David, when I bring up chocolate chip cookies, I want you to say no. <laughs> say no, Teresa. <laughs> give me permission to ask, <laughs> right. but then... I want you to tell me no. Remind me why I need to say no. <laughs> That's right. Remind me why. Yeah. Not that we can't have a treat every now and then. Mm-hmm. You can, but mm-hmm. remind me what's the end game. But it was totally fine that you had that chocolate chip cookie today, but it's um, the the point being for all of our folks out there mm-hmm. is to remember in a couple relationship, one of the most important things is just being able to say very clearly what you want more or less of, and that mm-hmm. for this exercise, it's what motivates you, what motivates you in the relationship, and make sure you tell your partner what motivates you. If you don't know, then explore a little bit back Absolutely. and forth. Go back yeah. and forth and kind of listen. Say, what do you think motivates me? What have you seen when I right. when I get things right? What have you done that has helped me with that? Right. So open up, and that builds intimacy as well in the relationship. So our point being this week encourage one another, edify one another, pull the best Mm -hmm. out in your partner. That's right. That's right. All right. So um, there you go, folks. Those are our um, thoughts on that specific topic of edifying. And next week, we are going to be wrapping it all up with P. P is for peace, how to have peace with one another. That's right. So, and you don't want to miss that one because... Um, I know for certain that every couple out there 
needs to have some uh, peace um, fighting tools in their in their tool belt. You don't want to fight peace. Yeah, peace. Uh, well, you, peace. Um, you, you not peace fighting, but peace. Uh, in, uh, encourage. No. Incur- no. Here's here's what we're we're gonna. You, you need to have a tool in your tool belt that helps you to have peace in the relationship. Conflict management tools. There you go. That's Conflict what we're management after. tools. Right. But anyway, we are going to be talking about how to have peace with one another, and um, and it doesn't mean that peace will be or that uh, conflict should never be present in your relationship. It just means how to how to how to handle it and how to have peace. We hope this is helping you. This podcast is helping you, and we want to encourage you that if it is of value to you, please uh, like, share, rate, review, subscribe, subscribe mm-hmm. whatever platform you're using this on. One of the most important things in there is share with others. Let's encourage mm-hmm. as many couples as possible. We are a team in this. Those of you who are listening, the two of us, we work at this together on encouraging folks. So thank you so much for joining us this week. And we will see you next week when we talk about conflict management with have peace with one another. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.